Hey, what is up, guys? Sin Priest from Team Sensor here, bringing you guys another PvP build today. I'm bringing you guys my Stamina Sorcerer build. Um, this is my King's Guard build. It is a Stamina Sorcerer, uh, somewhat of a tank build for PvP. Uh, this build was inspired by a lot of people: uh, Broken Glass, Patrick Scott, and Synthesis from Synthesis Gaming. So, um, this build did not come to my naturally. Uh, it was definitely inspired by other people especially broken glass after watching one of his videos um he ran a similar build on a nightblade and i thought i'd give my shots or give my take at a stamina sorcerer with a similar type of build so here's my stamina sorcerer build so once again shout out to patrick scott uh broken glass and synthesis for inspiring me to make something like this so um before we get started uh, please check out their channels if you have not yet heard about them. So go down in the description and check them out. They're pretty cool guys. So without further ado, let's get into this. This is my Stamina Sorcerer Kingsguard build. So my character sheet, we are a orc, a sorcerer, 354 champion points, 64 points in stamina, running the steed for increased movement speed and health recovery, running stamina and health recovery drinks, giving us 10k magicka, 22k health, and pushing almost 30k max stamina on our main bar. Our recovery is looking like 565 for magic, pushing almost 2400 health recovery, and stamina recovery is at 1814. Weapon damage unbuffed is 2130, weapon crit, we are in heavy armor, so weapon crit is low, it's a low crit build. Our physical resistance unbuffed, we're sitting at on average 21k spell resistance, so pretty good. So if you guys haven't guessed it, this build is a health recovery build, focusing on health regen. And um, in PvP, health uh, recovery is not affected by the 50% uh, healing reduction, so uh, you will be getting uh, 2,400 health recovery every uh, 2400 health every two seconds with this build and when this armor procs you'll be getting even more health recovery so with that being said let's get into the um, let's get into our um, our gear sets we're running three-piece night silence uh, sword and board on the front uh, two maces on the back and the head to complete the three-piece for max stamina and stamina recovery on the body, we are running 5-piece Orgnum Scales and 1-piece Engine Guardian. Orgnum Scales gives us health recovery, max health, max health, and if below 60% health, increased health recovery by 50%. This does not f affect our... It does not mean we'll be getting half of 2,392 health recovery. We'll be getting half of what our recovery would be without the drinks. So, without the drinks, I think I have... Mm, around 1400 or so so I'll be getting 700 health recovery when the set procs so my health recovery would be uh, a little over 3000 meaning when the set procs I'll be getting 3000 health every two seconds we're running the one piece engine garden for the health recovery it is impenetrable you can't go wrong with impen uh, I would recommend impen or divines and if you do not have any mats to create a helmet of night silence, go ahead and create a sword and board and then two weapons as your back bar. And then use a blood spawn monster helmet. Uh, Vet 12 at uh, legendary would, wouldn't would affect your build as much. So um, you can't go wrong with blood spawn, Vet 12 and up on legendary. So I would recommend that if you do not want to waste time on making a helmet of night silence. Our jewelry is the necklace ring uh, necklace and rings of agility running three piece agility for our jewelry uh two robust one healthy two with weapon damage one with stamina recovery uh we're running we're running uh prismatic enchants on our chest and legs both infused the rest are divines except for our monster shoulder which is in pen uh, you want infused on the big pieces and then divines on the rest. I'm running six heavy and one medium. I'm running six heavy for the heavy passives. I'll get into that later. So going with our skills, 
we'll start with our passives and the why we're running orc we're running the orc solely for the robust passive increased health recovery by 30 percent which really makes this kind of build uh suitable for uh, an orc or a nord so if you're a nord or an orc and you are a uh, sorcerer or if you just want to run this build because you're an orc um take advantage of that robust passive and make a health recovery build it's fun it's super fun it may not be the most overpowered build but it really is a fun build and you can't go wrong if you're having fun playing this game so with the orc we uh running this build because we increase health recovery by 30 percent and that's the main reason why we're running this build uh and the main reason why i chose the orc because i want that passive and we are running six piece heavy armor because we want this constitution passive increased health recovery by four percent per piece of heavy armor so we're running six heavy giving us 24 percent health recovery and running one piece medium so get the medium passes that fit for you except for this if you're not running five piece medium you don't need this but i was running five piece medium as i farmed so i just haven't taken the points out of this yet so you want to fill everything but this because this requires five uh a set of five for uh for this passive so you want all the passes from heavy and you want all the passives from medium except for agility so going straight into our abilities we have defensive posture as our x it is a reflect it's a great reflect uh, i do plan on morphing this to the one that stuns the caster um we also have it slotted to reduce the damage uh when we're blocking by eight percent and increase um uh increase the cost or uh, reduce the cost of blocking by eight percent our Y is our main DPS ability, and it's Pierce Armor. It does, uh, it's a decent DPS ability. Affects them with Major uh, Fracture and Major Breach. Um, there is another morph that gives you minor, uh, gives you minor resolve, but since we're running Bound Armor, we're gonna go with Pierce Armor because they won't stack. So if you're not a Sorcerer, I would recommend using the other morph. I think it's Ransack. Uh, instead of pierce armor b is our gap closer invasion uh very great stun uh stuns i think if it's i think it still stuns up to five seconds at max range uh very great uh gap closer and i recommend this over the shield one that gives you the damage shield because you won't really notice the damage shield in my opinion so b is our gap closer lb is boundless storm this is our buff ability giving us major resolve and major ward increasing physical and spell resistance by 5k also giving us movement speed 40 percent for 7.5 seconds while active nearby enemies will take 259 shock damage so we have this here because we're in heavy armor and we're slow we want to be more mobile so we have this we also have it because this is what we use to buff up our physical and spell resistance so um you want to always have this ability active when roaming around a pvp if you're not in lightning form then you're wrong so you want to make sure you always have lightning uh boundless storm on you lightning form on uh so keep that in mind so you want to make sure if you're running a stamp sword at this build you want to make sure you're always glowing blue our rb abilities is bound armor uh increases uh, damage with heavy attacks by 11%, increases max stamina by 8%, and grants us minor resolve, increasing physical resistance. So this is great to have for the heavy attack damage. We'll be doing a lot of heavy and light attacks, and it, you can't go wrong with max stam. And a little bit of uh, physical resistance goes a long way. Our ultimate on this is somewhat of our execute. It's flawless dawnbreaker. Uh, we have it solely to increase our weapon damage. I don't have it uh, maxed out, so while slotted, your weapon damage is increased by 5% at level 1. I believe at level 4, it is 8%. So I'm going to continue working on this to get it to 8%, so my sword and board will be hitting a lot harder. Now, let me talk to you guys about bound armaments and why we are running it. Uh, it's nice to have max stam and nice heavy attacks, but the main reason is because of the passive here. Increase your health and stamina recovery by 20% when a Daedric summoning ability is slotted. And that ability is bound to armaments. So as long as this is slotted on both bars, 
I'm getting that extra health recovery. So, and once again, this is a health recovery build, so you can't go wrong with more health recovery. And that is why we're running Bound Armor. Let's get to our back bar. We are running Dual Wield instead of 2H. Uh, you can run 2H for to have Execute and Rally on there, but um, I prefer to have Steel Tornado because it's a great AoE to pull Nightblades out of stealth. Our X ability, Crit Surge. This is our buff, giving us Major Brutality, increasing weapon damage by 20%. While active, Critical Strikes heal for 60% of the damage done. Damage over time abilities will not proc this effect. So every time I hit a crit, I'll be getting health back. And since this is a low crit build, uh, I do run crit uh, crit potions to give me a little bit of boost in crit. You can run the other morph that gives you major sorcery, increasing spell power by 20%. If you want your lightning form and streak to hit a little bit harder, just a little bit harder, you can't run that. You can't go wrong with either one. Why is our AoE Steel Tornado is also a great execute. Um, does 3k physical damage up to 100% against wounded targets. So no introduction, this is a very common used ability and a very great AoE. The B is our heal, we're using Resolving Vigor. Um, hits for 9k health over 5 seconds. And nearby allies for 7k over 5 seconds, so this is a decent heal. Um, buffed up, it's at 9k. Uh, buffed up is around 10k, unbuffed right now is at 9k. This is our main heal for this build. LB is another key part to this uh, build. This is our streak. Our LB ability is streak. Now this is our escape ability. Since we are a health recovery build and the health recovery kicks in every two seconds, you want to make sure you create a, a breather time, a time to breathe between fights to, for your health recovery to kick in. And this uh, nothing better than streak. Unless you're Nightblade, you have cloak. Cloak is a great, a uh, great ability to to regain yourself um, streak we use this to separate ourselves from the enemies until we can get our health recovery to kick back in a very great escape uh, I usually combo this with vigor I'll streak away vigor and come back into the fight it's a great ability RB is our once again our bound armor it's a toggle ability so we have it on both bars so we keep it on all the time to make sure we always have the bound armor up and we always have that 20% health and stamina recovery. Our ultimate for our back bar is Ice Comet. No introduction, very strong ability, 10k cold damage and does do a area damage effect, uh, does leave a ground effect on the area. Doing a damage over time, great ability. You can swap this out for overload if that's how you uh, play, if that's your playstyle, you can run overload. And on your overload bar I would put shuffle. Uh, maybe Blood Altar for extra health recovery and Caltrops. So it's up to you how you want to play that. That's what I would recommend. Now, for our Fump Bar, I want to mention if you're running in a group with a dedicated healer and all that, a uh, small ball group, you can switch out Defensive Posture for a Reverb Bash if you want to be a dick about things. Uh, Reverb Bash is a little, a little buggy right now. Um, I have uh, knock people into CC lock where they there's they're locked in a stun for quite a long time So if you don't want to be uh, exploiting shit like that don't run it if you want to be a dick Go ahead and fucking use it. Uh, I run open world in open world I prefer to have defensive posture up instead of reverb bash. So I have a little bit more sustain on the battlefield and We're gonna go to my champion points We're gonna make this really quick. So I have 27 to warlord 79 to Mooncalf, 10 to Healthy, 2 into Tumbling, 31 to Blade Expert, gives us 11% uh, heavy attack damage, stacking with Bound Armor, which also gives us 11, giving our heavy attacks 22% extra, extra damage. 73 into Mighty, 13 to Piercing, 1 into Precise Strikes, we are Heavy Armor, so this is a low crit build. Remember, we're running 6 Heavy, 1 Medium. Uh, 27 blocks expertise, 27 spell shield, 27 resistance. I do plan on taking some out of spell shield and pumping a little bit more into resistant, uh, but I will test those out in the future. 6 in the hardy, 27 to elemental defender. I do plan on taking everything out of hardy and putting it into quick recovery. 
quick recovery we have four here increasing effectiveness of healing so our vigor will be hitting us just a little bit harder so you can't go wrong with a little bit more uh health so these are the stats unbuffed now remember we're running orc for the health recovery bound armor for the health recovery and I have 354 champion points. So if you guys are running this build, uh, you guys stats, your stats may be different because of the champion point system. Uh, it may be different because of the gear I'm also wearing. I'm wearing purple gear and uh, my sword and board is legendary so I can get the extra weapon damage with the sword and board. Now these are the stats on buff. Let me buff up for you real quick. Buffed up, health recovery 2667, stamina recovery 2106, weapon damage 2504, physical and spell resistant uh, averaging around 26k. So these are all the, these are what our stats look like when we buff up. <laughs> now let me go ahead and show you guys what this set, uh, our health recovery is sitting at once we proc our organum scales. Health recovery is at 30, 80 when uh, we fall below 60% health. So that's really good. So 30, 80 is our health recovery when the organ scale procs. And if you have a potion active, giving us 20% extra health recovery, you will be having a lot more health recovery when that set procs. So you can't go wrong with it. So if I didn't leave anything out, um, once again, the potions I mentioned earlier. I am running Essence of Weapon Crit, giving me Major Savagery. That's about 10% crit for 36 seconds. Uh, restores health, restores stamina, gives me health, and stamina recovery for 20 seconds. 20% uh, I mean, sorry, it would give us 20% recovery for 36.6 seconds. I do want to work on maxing out my alchemy, so my potion uh, recovery will last a little bit longer. So with with that being said, that is all it. That's, that's all that is. This build is very simple, focusing on health regen. Um, I have been able to one v one, one v two, uh, one v three, but anything more than one v three, you're asking, you're asking for trouble. Um, this build does excel better in small group play. Uh, you can solo with this build. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of skill and practice uh, to run a build like this. So once again, um, if you guys love this build, give it a try. Shout out to Broken Glass, Patrick Scott, and Synthesis for inspiring me to make this build on a Stamina Sorcerer. So I hope you guys did enjoy um, this build. If you guys did, please leave a like. If you guys did not, please dislike and leave in the comments what you guys want me to improve on. Um, and if you haven't not, if you have not yet done so, please subscribe to my channel. It will help me a lot. So I'll catch you guys later. Hope you guys did enjoy the build. Thanks.